God appeared to Solomon a second time, saying, I have heard the prayer and plea you have made before me. I have consecrated this temple which you have built by putting my name there forever. My eyes and my heart will always be there. And God gives instructions to Solomon, saying, If you walk before me faithfully, I will establish a royal throne over Israel forever. But if you or your descendants turn away from me, I will cut off Israel from the land I have given them. I will reject this temple. Israel will then become a byword and an object of ridicule among all peoples, and this temple will become a heap of rubble. We then hear about Solomon's other activities. Solomon made the Amorites, Hittites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites who were still living in the land into slaves, and he turned the Israelites into their taskmasters. He went to the temple three times a year to offer sacrifices, and he had a fleet of ships which brought back gold from distant lands, including 420 talents of gold from Ophir. In those days, 420 talents of gold could buy 10,054,800 sheep or 670,320 slaves, or 167,580 houses. Now in chapter 10, we read that the Queen of Sheba visited to test Solomon's wisdom, and he was able to answer all of her difficult questions. The Queen of Sheba was overwhelmed by the splendor of Solomon's kingdom, and offered him many gifts of spices and 120 talents of gold. Now in those days, 120 talents of gold could buy 2,872,800 sheep, or 191,520 slaves, or 47,880 houses. Now, all of a sudden, in the middle of chapter 10, Solomon's life takes a turn for the worse, and for some unknown reason he begins to turn away from God. This all starts with the use of the number 666 in the text. The storyteller intentionally uses this number to show that at this point something had gone terribly wrong with Solomon. The text begins by saying that the amount of gold that Solomon brought in annually was 666 talents in addition to everything else. He also made 200 shields of gold using 600 shekels for each shield. He also made 300 smaller shields of gold using 3 minas of gold for each of them. And Solomon made a grand throne of ivory and gold for himself with 6 steps leading up to the throne and 6 gold lions on the right and 6 gold lions on the left. Everything was made from gold in Solomon's palace. The text says that there was so much gold that silver was worthless in Solomon's day. He had a fleet of trading ships that returned every three years with gold, silver, ivory, apes, and baboons. And he had 1,400 chariots and 12,000 horses. And he did all of this even though the law code of Deuteronomy says that the king must not have much gold and must not have many horses. We then hear that Solomon loved many foreign women and married the princesses of Moab, Ammon, Edom, Sidon, and the Hittites. The text says he had 700 wives of royal birth and 300 concubines, and his wives led him astray. It also says that Solomon began to worship the Asherah of the Sidonians. On a hill east of Jerusalem, Solomon built a high place for Chemosh, the detestable god of Moab, and for Moloch, the detestable god of the Ammonites. He did the same for all of his foreign wives, who burned incense and offered sacrifices to their gods. And God was angry with Solomon and told him that because of his attitude towards the covenant, he would tear the kingdom away from him and give it to one of his subordinates. God also said that for David's sake, he would wait to do this till after Solomon's death and Solomon's son would still reign over one of the twelve tribes in keeping with the covenant. We then hear about how Hadad of Edom rebelled against Solomon. Remember that when Isaac blessed Esau, he said Edom would become Israel's slave, but that eventually Edom would break free. Rezan of Soba also rebelled and set up his base in Damascus. We then read about Jeroboam's rebellion. Because of his talents, Solomon had put Jeroboam of Ephraim in charge of the people who were building Jerusalem's walls. The prophet Ahijah shows up and gives a message to Jeroboam. He gave ten of twelve pieces of a ripped cloak to Jeroboam and told him that he would one day be leader of ten tribes of Israel. The house of David would still have at least one tribe. Solomon tried to kill Jeroboam, but Jeroboam fled to Egypt, to Shishak the king, and stayed there until Solomon's death. Solomon reigned in Jerusalem for forty years, and when Solomon died, his son Rehoboam succeeded him as king. 